Hello viewers. Thank you so much for your overwhelming response. I am back uh, with a, a video on uh, NISM series 21B Portfolio Manager Certification Examination. Uh, if you would have seen uh, most of my recent videos uh, were about Social Auditor Certification Examination. Uh, but uh, this time I have created uh, one video on Chapter 1 of Portfolio Manager Certification Examination with 15 different questions. I am sure uh, these questions are going to help you to prepare for the exam. Uh, let me take you through all those 15 questions and you can work on solution of these questions along with me. So uh, let us start with the first question which is now appearing here. So in this particular question uh, there is a uh, dash 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 followed by rate of return is the minimum rate of return investors expect when making investment decisions. So what is the minimum rate of return that investors expect? Obviously this minimum rate of return that investors expect is called as the required rate of return. So it's not realized return. Realized re return is something that you get after you have invested for a couple of months, years or a specific time frame. Assured return is the return that you would get uh, from a uh, you know investment entity. Similarly there is a guaranteed return that you may get but this is the minimum rate of return which investors expect and that is called as the required rate of return. This takes us to question 2. This additional compensation over the nominal risk free rate is, is called as what? So you know if you have a nominal risk free rate but you are, get, you are looking for a return beyond that what will that be called as? Is it risk compensation? The answer is no. Is, is it risk realization? The answer is again no. Is it risk reward? No. It's actually called as risk premium. So that's the question two and answer to it. Now let us move to question three which is the difference between yield on a government security and the corporate security for the same maturity is called as what? Now government typically borrows at the cheapest rate. Corporates borrow at higher rate than government and there is always a difference between the two. So that is something which we call as the credit spread. So that's the answer to quiz 3. Now we move on to fourth question. Uh, which of the following risks has direct linkage with secondary market? Which means you know for this risk to actually happen or take place there must be secondary market uh, and uh, you know the instruments should be tradable in uh, the market either at a very high volume or at a potentially low volume. So a uh, direct linkage of secondary market is with liquidity risk because it's the secondary market in which uh, securities are traded and if they are not having sufficient volume or the required volume then liquidity risk will get created. So that's the answer which is for the fourth question. We move on to the fifth one. Which of the following is not an example of category 1 alternative investment fund in India? As you know we have three categories of AIFs. AIF 1, 2 and 3 and out of this hedge funds fall under AIF 3. So this is not an example of category 1 alternative investment fund. So we have now completed five questions and I have shared with you what could be the potential answer for those questions. This takes me to the next one which is the question 6 which is slightly longer than the previous six, uh, previous 5 questions. Which of the following statements is true about regulatory risk? So regulatory risk is lower in new investment opportunities and products than matured and established one. A regulatory risk is higher in new investments opportunity products than the matured and established one. Regulatory risk is the risk that existing regulations will become more strenuous or costly and regulatory risk is the risk associated with uncertainties about regulatory framework pertaining to investments. Now in this actually the uh, uh, you know the option a is correct, option C is correct and option D is also correct. So what is not correct is option B. So regulatory, uh, sorry what is correct is op option B. So A is not correct, C is not correct and D are not correct. 
but B is correct here. So the answer would be that regulatory risk is higher in new investment opportunities and products than in matured and established one. So please note that the answer for this would be B and not A, C or D. I would have said something different in the beginning, but the answer is B here. Now let us move to quiz seven, which is about which of the following risk is associated with war, terrorist act, and tensions between states that affect the normal and peaceful course of international relationship? It's very easy to identify. It's called as geopolitical risk, not political risk, because it is between countries, okay, and they are associated with uh, uh, war, terrorist acts, and tensions, etc. Question number eight is one plus re real rate of return multiplied by inflation minus one. What will this give us? Okay, will it give us realized return, risk-free return, market rate of return? No, this will give us nominal rate of return. That's the answer. Now we move on to question nine. Which of the following securities constitute largest component of debt market? It has to be read as the debt market. So this is the debt market. Okay, so debt market, uh, which is uh, D, E. BT, okay. So this is your debt market or the debt market, as some people will like to call it as. So this is your debt market, okay. And this debt market, the largest component is the government security. So this is the government securities. Now question 10: Which of the following is not right example of a managed portfolio? Okay. So obviously managed portfolio is provided by mutual funds. Alternative investment funds, but not provided by the bank deposits. We move on to question 11. Financial assets are generally classified into two broad categories. What are these? Bonds and deposits, real estate and gold, equity and gold? No. They are actually classified into two, which is debt and equity. So we'll go ahead with answer one. Let us move to question 12. Future value of investment is influenced by time period rate of return liquidity out of the three a and b are correct so we'll go with both a and b now question number 13 which of the following statements is true about a portfolio manager portfolio manager is required to accept minimum 50 lakhs from the client a portfolio manager cannot borrow on behalf of the client a portfolio manager is a body corporate uh, who advises or directs or undertakes on behalf of investors the management and administration of portfolio of securities and portfolio manager provide investment solutions which are generic for all the investors. No, portfolio managers don't provide generic solution. They provide very specific and customized solution. So this fits into which of the following statement is not true, right? Uh, move on to question 14. What is the minimum amount of investment required in case of alternative investment funds in India. 50 lakh is for portfolio manager and 1 crore is for alternative investment. So what about question 15? EPFO is allowed to invest up to 15% of incremental deposits in equity or equity related scheme. So with this we have completed 15 questions. I'm sure they will be useful for you. Thank you so much for your time and write to me on health of my wealth at gmail.com.